Hi, this is Paula from CHE. I was in beautiful Point Cross this week at the edge of Shady Camp. It's at a site there along Cabo Trail Road that developers are planning to build an RV campground. But neighbors think that isn't the right place for the project. They like to keep the landscape intact and traffic out of their backyard. Here's more on the project that's building up tension in the community. Nine acres of land going all the way to the beach where developers are planning to accommodate 118 RV and 30 tent sites. Numbers that neighbors find alarming. It's really, it's a, it's a loss of, of privacy, uh, you know, where our grandchildren would go out and, and run around the yard and, and uh, head down towards the, uh, towards the beach on the, on the property that we have. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel that's something I would feel comfortable doing now. Uh, you know, you're not going to let your seven, eight-year-olds uh, run around when you've got, you know, hundreds of strangers next door. Who knows who they are and, and you know, what their motivations might be. I'm not disparaging them, of course, but, uh, you know, locking our homes. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're there. We don't, we rarely lock our doors. We, you know, our garage is open. Our car doors are, are unlocked. Uh, and, and now I, I certainly feel a, a, a very sense of, uh, of loss of that safety. Owners of the plot, Scott McPherson and Jason Hodder, say the project would benefit the whole community. Scott McPherson, he's from here, grew up here. He's been working out west for a long time. <clears throat> and it's important to understand how this came about. So Scotty is always very proud of this area, very proud of the East Coast. And so he was always telling me how wonderful it was. And so finally, and he was telling about his dream. And his dream was this, is to come out here, have a place like this, come back, retire here, and be part of the community. And so he brought me out here two years ago for the first time, and I was like, this is beautiful. And so what do we want to do? Well, we want to have a business like this. We want to respect the environment. We want to bring business um, to Chetty Camp, to the businesses around here. So, you know, there's, there's some secondary benefits to this, so it's not just us. Uh, we want to be successful so we can give to the community and be, you know, a very integral part of the community and be involved here. And, you know, so, you know, that's really the, that's really the driving force behind all this. The RV campground has some community support. Lucille Timmons, who owns a smaller RV park across the street from the project, told us in a statement, I am in agreement with bringing economic growth to our community as long as it doesn't infringe on other people's rights. Our community is always looking for ways to attract new business and opportunities for our people to come back home to make a good living. The owner of this campground is a young person who had worked away and found an opportunity to come back home to make his living while owning his own business. I think we should be supportive of that. As far as this affecting our business, the way I see it is that anything that attracts more tourists to our area is good for my business. But neighbors around the site think there are better places to build a campground. We don't feel as property owners that we're just losing a, a view or a, 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 you know, scenery. It's uh, trucks coming and going, cars coming and going. There's no, no curfew how long this can go on. And uh, campfires, you have your windows open in the summertime. You get a south wind. What happens? The wind blows through our house like it's beautiful in the summertime. Now we've got 30 40 people out having campfires in the lot next to us. In total, we spoke with nine neighboring households that do not want to see the proposed campground go ahead. Residents had a plethora of questions, including about water supply and sewage. They grew even more concerned when developers received a stop work order because they didn't have all the required permits, which the Eastern District Planning Commission was able to confirm. The owners of the plot say the practice is normal as long as the municipality is okay with it and that they stop working as soon as concerns arose. They also say they will be drilling their own wells, that they won't build a septic system because RVs will bring their own tanks, and that quiet time will be enforced. What neighbors find particularly problematic is that they have so many questions and few answers that their concerns don't have to be taken into consideration because the law does not require a public consultation to build a campground in that area. It's something they want to see change. It's a residential uh, community. Uh, there are a few businesses, but very few, and they're zoned pro appropriately. Uh, but if there is going to be, on a going forward basis, uh, no more of this, um, what my neighbors look at as misuse of the property, 
uh, properties around them. The only way that that's going to happen is if the bylaws are changed. The director of the Eastern District Planning Commission, John Bain, says that under this bylaw, the site has the same type of zoning as the Shirikam Island campground. Areas are arguably different. But as he explains, the zoning bylaw would have reflected the needs of the community when it was passed in the year 2000. When the documents were first written uh, and when they were reviewed, we would have went to the community, uh, had an area advisory committee, so we would get that kind of community input and um, have open houses and public hearings and all of that to get that kind of community feedback. And, you know, at the time when the, when the document was written, which was, I don't know, a, a number of years ago now, there was a feeling that they were this similar, so that a similar zoning would, would work for both of those areas. Um, but, you know, times change, areas evolve, and um, perhaps an argument could be made that they're not the same anymore and that the zoning should reflect that. That, that really gets back to your first question as to could you change it? And yeah, that might be a very good reason for changing it, right? Is that this area along the Cabot Trail isn't the same as uh, Shettacamp Island, to use the other example, right? Um, but what, why they decided way back uh, that they were similar, I suppose at the time they were more similar than they are today. Even if a bylaw is changed, after two hearings the Municipal Council on a public consultation, the amendment wouldn't be retroactive. So it may not affect this project, but others to come. Do you think it should be changed? You can write to us at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.